Hi, this is uh, Franz Cantor, cartoonist, illustrator, caricaturist, tune talker, etc., etc. And I'm here with. And you're a pretty good caricaturist as well. I, I said that, but oh, I didn't say that. But you're pretty good. No, you're pretty, pretty good. good. I'm not. Um, and I'm Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum, and this is one of our books in the Australian Cartoon Museum Library. Or is it yours? No, it's from the library. Oh. It's called Creating Characters with Personality by Tom Bancroft. Uh, with an introduction by Glenn Keane. Uh, Tom Bancroft is obviously an animator, so you is published by uh, Watson Guptill. And um, this is pretty, pretty good. How do you know this guy's an animator? Here's a, here's a little bit of a, uh, an indication. When you see drawings in red pencil like this, uh, animators tend to draw in blue pencil, which I do, and also uh, in red pencil, and then they do clean up. I know uh, why they draw in blue pencil, but why red pencil? R red pencil is in opposition to the blue pencil. So if you usually do another layer of, uh, of detailing or ah, corrections okay. over the blue pencil. It just uh, helps the pencil. 3D effect. Not, not, no, nothing to do with the 3D effect, actually. Well, depth. Yeah, we'll get into it later, but it's, it, 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 it helps um, uh, cartoonists uh, draw. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's, a light, it's a lighter color. It's not a committing color like black. Mm. So this is very so interesting. You don't need what to rub the lines he's, out. He's, put the, he's, he's throwing the picture away because he's drawing another one. But yeah. It seamlessly comes Well, that off gives the you wall. an indication of an animator. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of drawing involved in animation. And of course, Glenn Keane is a famous uh, animator, Disney animator, and uh, director. So, what is this book? This book. Is, uh, is put together very carefully with a lot of love on um, creating a career out of a, being a character designer. So it tells you what does character designers do. You have do. to be a character yourself. Yeah. You have to characterize. Well, this is based on the idea of Disney with yeah. the Disney pitch board. So yes. Walt Disney used to pitch but with a pointer on these boards. And artists have to act out what they want to do. Well, there's two kinds of character designers. Where to begin? Imagining the characters and character hierarchy. That's chapter one. So two kinds of animators. Um, he's put. Um, okay, Someone the blue sky like designers, the people that come with um, characters out of nothing, out of thin air. They come up with these beautiful designs out of thin air. They're beautiful. Um, the other is the character polisher, which takes time to massage out of the, with the pencils over, you know, drawings over drawings over drawings over drawings. So it's a synthesis and it's a careful study. So these are the two kinds of character animated character designers, which he's um, uh, talking about here, which is actually quite clever. Um, there's nothing to tell, nothing to say that one day you can't be a character polisher and the that's, next day a blue sky I designer. Say. I mean, I think that okay. I, I think this is really important yeah. that you sit down and just get as many ideas out as possible. Yeah. Well, uh, the character the character polisher starts out as a blue sky designer. Almost, well. almost. Don't think about what you're doing. Just do it. Just yeah. get stuck into it. Yeah. But you need both. So, imagining the characters. So, with a thought balloon, obviously, you've got to think about the characters. There's an aha moment. So you're designing a story basically with these characters. All character, all cartoon characters imply a story. They all imply a story. That's the beauty of cartoons. Well, they've got different belts for a start. <laughs> yes. So what the details of what the what you put into the character is what story is uh, read by visually read by the viewer. Well, these are questions you should ask. Yeah. Well, it's saying here, ideas don't come <clears throat> out of thin air. So yeah. watch a lot of TV, read a lot of comics, yeah. do a lot of sketching yeah, from life or what TV. What is the character's place in the film? Yeah. You know, what is the character's personality? Are there point plots, are there plot points within the storyline yeah. that affect the design? Mm. Yeah. Character hierarchy. So you've got different kinds. Here's an exploration on different sorts of characters. What's a character hierarchy? Well, a character hierarchy is something that um, uh, works in a cast of characters. So each character is implicitly different from one from the other. So here we have, like, a, a presumably a, a, an idea of different cartoons from different casts. But here you have an iconic character. What's another iconic character? Hello Kitty is one, Mickey Mouse is another one, okay? So they're iconic characters. You can tell from, from an instant, from one tenth of a second, that this is a this is basically I, a logo. I just saw the ev evolution of Mickey Mouse in, yeah. into the Kitty character. Then you have the simple character, is also called a stylized character. 
Then you have a broad character which is expressive, you know, very, very active. You can see the difference between the two. Here's very angular, got this his, one's very got his fluid. Pants on backwards, there's yeah. a pocket on the front. Yeah, well, this is the fluid characters are very, very flexible. Mm. They use like uh, the wolf in Tex Avery cartoons or mm. Roger Rabbit, if mm. you remember Roger Rabbit. Mm. The simple character, uh, examples of simple characters Fred Flintstone, Sonic the Hedgehog, and uh, the character from uh, Dexter's Lab. Okay, so Comedy Relief, which he's put in here, which is quite interesting, is a character that. Um, uh, he has broad visual humor, but he also has uh, a straight side as well. So these are characters the wise, like... Um, the wise character, the... Um, yeah, well... The fatherly... Look, he hasn't got a shirt on. He's he can be... He can, do, he can do double takes, but he can also be very... Um, uh, very subtle. Yeah. His animation can be very subtle, okay? Yeah. So he can explode and be subtle. They have ideas of lead characters. Um, levels of realism to put into lead characters, characters combinations of, of characters and how they will fit or won't fit in a given situation. So when you're coming up with a cast, you know that this character may not fit with this character, mm, mm. depending on the cartoon. That'll, that's important. That's yeah. important. Well, let's, let's Be, go. Because uh, otherwise... On. There's you're... assignments in every chapter, right? Yeah. There's assignment, assignment one. So this book... Okay, creating characters is also a course, so you can you can read it and do the course. Okay, all these assignments, fantastic. So create a profile. These are different profiles here. Butch Hartman, uh, the creative executive producer of uh, Fairly Odd Parents, uh, talking about um, uh, uh, his 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 ideas of casts. Okay. So here we're getting into the designing characters. You always start with simple shapes. Learn shapes, spheres, pyramids, cubes, rectangles, or whatever, longer pyramids. Then, you know, other simple shapes, like kidney shapes, and distortions based on um, the idea of caricature, which is exaggerating what proportions you see. You exaggerate them. See, this is uh, like the Loomis idea of drawing a head which is based on a sphere which represents a cranium. With a cartoon, it's, it's all about squash and stretch. So it's still the same process, but now the sphere is a, is a squashed, is a squashed sphere, okay? So that gives you, you're changing the proportions on the fly, mm. all right? Mm. So using ideas of exaggeration. The neck, the meat, potatoes and veggies. Down. Yeah, yeah. So shape variation in characters are very important. Shape construction from simple, you get a very detailed uh, 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 drawing from very simple construction. If I wanted to animate Learn to this... draw your simple construction from different angles, looking down, looking yeah. up, you know. And then if I wanted to animate this character, I would use simple shape to get the movement and action on the side. And then layer it with the detail. Yeah. So you start yeah. with uh, stick but figures get right, and then... Get the movement right. Yeah. A lot of actors, mass, a lot of actors don't get into their character. They say, if I get the walk right, it'll all come from that. Yes, shape is, this is, this is um, shape symbolism, use of circles, which are, s are round curves, which give a feeling of uh, friendliness to a character. Yeah. And then squares, which give a very heavy set uh, feeling to characters, and triangles, of course, which give a different dynamic effect. So experiment with triangles like upside down triangles and pyramids. Mm. Right. Size proportions very important. Uh, you can get a very very uh, increased effect here. This is more like a uh, zany effect. This is more like a, uh, a younger cartoon. Uh, effect. This is more proportionate, which you'd expect in a uh, in a slightly older uh, uh, market. Well, they put the small one in the middle here to break up the. Yeah, variety yeah. is very, very, very important. The proportions, variety, and proportions are very important. Assignment two. This is creating. This is another assignment. Creating a cast of characters that gives you the brief there. And um, you know uh, things to think about: silhouette, negative space. Yes. This, yeah, negative space and lines, straights and curves, straights and curves, folks. You know, variety. Okay, contrast in the line, heavy and light. 
Um, negative space, that's always very important, but people forget about it. Yeah, recurring shapes within, yeah. the, within, the, within the design. Um, this should actually be in the beginning, but anyway, yeah. we've got here um, creating interesting faces out of uh, basic shapes. You start with a circle. You've all seen the uh, exercises of drawing 30 circles and doing some interesting uh, faces in each circle. What you need to understand is when you change proportion, you get a vastly different effect. So you can do the squash and stretch of the circle itself, right? Or start to experiment with distances of, of uh, elements within the face. And even actually change the mouth from yep. that central line. So this is a more normal, even spaced, yeah. equidistant uh, uh, features. This one is um, the features of the eye are spread apart, the nose is bigger, so they've changed the proportion. This, this one again, in the opposite direction, the eyes are closer together. You get a different effect. Mm. They're nice. Yeah. Doggy so do. lots and lots of uh, exercises on drawing eyes and ears and dog noses. Uh, lots of beautiful cartoons of dogs uh, that he's done here. It's magnificent. That's my boy. So some dogs, yeah. Oggy doggy doggy daddy. So some very very beautiful uh, designs of uh, you know uh, having uh, characters. Traditionally, mm. uh, animals are given human characteristics mm. so that they can talk. Lovely little yeah. drawing. Yeah. Very fluid designs here. You can see with the the underdrawing, the, the rough underdrawing of the red pencil. Mm. This is for another Peco assignment. Pecos Bill drawing a cowboy. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, this Jack is Davis. Jack Davis. His thoughts mm. on um, <laughs> yeah, his thoughts mm. on cowboys. You can see his beautiful uh, designs for mm. uh, his characters. Mm. Lovely. Chapter three: Creating appealing characters. Uh, uh, creating appealing character drawings. Yeah. So, alrighty. So. Um, Okay, it's just a little Start gag here, starting again. with circles, yes, but circle. We're now going with simple shapes, but we're giving them personality. So, how Ooh. do you, Ooh. how do you draw? You need to draw figures, you need to think of figures in three dimensions, so you can draw them from any angle. Mm. In order to do that, you need to conceive of them as simple basic shapes and then draw, layer the details in over the top, all right? So why is this important? Because in 2D, in 2D animation or in 3D animation, if, you, if you're sculpting over these drawings, you need to see the character from different angles and how it will work. So you need to be able to draw the character from usually, typically, when I draw a character, I will start with a three quarter view. From that, I will extrapolate mm. to the front view and then the side view and then maybe the back view or the up, the, the, the But, but the you're an experienced artist. To. Most people start from that one and that yeah. one. But you need to you need to start with a three quarter view. That's the that's the Well that's it has more information. It has. It has information about the side and information about the front in yes. one picture. Yes. So typically your first port of call, three quarter view. Then you extrapolate to the side view and the front view. Okay. Similarly with the head. Three quarter view, three quarter view, three quarter view. Extrapolate to the side view and the front view. Okay? Pushing your design. So this is the idea of starting with a design and then putting a sheet of paper over the top and then pushing it seeing where it goes, okay, exaggerating the pose, exaggerating the, the, the proportions, you know, making the hand bigger, making the head bigger, making the nose bigger, making the feet bigger, making it look simpler, making it look more complex, changing his personality. These are things that come to you in drawing. So you need to have... Giving him an elbow. <laughs> yeah. So you need to have the ability to, um, to you know, use a, a drawing, one of your drawings as a starting point and then, and then going crazy in different variations. So it's just a simple matter of putting a sheet of paper over the top and seeing very lightly what's underneath. Um, okay, well, I'm going to change this figure, keep this pose, uh, keep the personality, but change the figure. And this is how you get all this pushing the, the, the envelope so that you get the maximum effect, the maximum creative uh, uh, personality and uh, expression and uh, uh, gesture. So... Yeah, so there's another thoughts from here, um, uh, Bill Amend. Uh, okay, chapter four, drawing beautiful women. So we all like to draw beautiful women. Uh, go back, see. 
he's well, drawing a beautiful woman, but he's using so the himself. idea. Animators use mirrors. Mirrors. Yeah. So the concept of this is very simple. Um, the the man that drew that animated uh, um, Princess Jasmine in uh, Disney Disney's Aladdin um, used okay pictures of reference of the of the model, but the expressions and the personality were created from a shaving mirror that he himself created these expressions. So mm. he's channeling. Um, him, his, he's, his he's solution his to a coquettish smile he's, or a kiss, he's uh, channeling his version through the character of Jasmine. Yeah, trying, character. trying to get the inner Sophie Loren inside him. Yeah, well, it's informing the character with accurate details mm. to make it more fleshed out, more realistic. So this is an example of uh, 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 thoughts on, you know, proportions, which are typically... Um, used for creating beautiful women. So the big eyes, the big heads, the big, uh, you know... Big uh, eyes are very important. Big busts, thin ankles, mm. etc. Streamlined but rounded. Yeah. Curves and rhythm, very important when you're doing life drawing. Curves and rhythm. Mm. Okay, that's informed by the gesture, the gesture of the, the pose which indicates the action. You can see now here the lines of... Uh, Lining up uh, angles here. This is a contraposta uh, uh, pose where you've got the uh, angle of the shoulders and the hips in opposition. So you get like a, 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 a pinching of um, lines on one side and a, and, a, and a curve and a bulging of lines on the other. So to get more interest and sinewy motion mm. inside the drawing. Faces and eyes, different proportions. Look how well he's uh, explained these uh, proportions. You could compare the, the eyes with the mouth, right? These are beautiful, beautiful designs. Or the eyes and the nose. Mm. And also you know? the side. Yes, the side. try to get side, you know. Again, same with the head, right? Drawing the three-quarter. You draw the three-quarter, yeah. then you extrapolate. But these, this is a beautiful way of understanding how your eyes work in perspective. You put the eyes in perspective. Mm. Hairstyles, trying it out. So these are different kinds of sketches. You know, go, going towards manga. You can see the little kawaii eyes there. Yeah, little. Yeah, see They're these big. Oh, upside down yeah. U's, which are beautiful. And the the use of uh, these reflected, shimmering reflections in these mm. big eyes, mm. which are from uh, manga and anime. This is an assignment to create a girl, pretty girl, cowboy, a cowgirl this time. Um, then a create a profile, Mark Hen. And that's an example of Mark Hen's work. Right, this is chapter five, uh, four legs, a whole different animal. This is some beautiful uh, designs of, uh, of uh, dogs yeah, and other animals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, importance of anatomy, an anatomy and uh, acuteness factor, etc. So, um, different lions, realistic lion, down to uh, feature film lions, which is like Lion King, to um, cartoon lions and anthropomorphic. They look much happier lines. than real lions, don't they? They do. Of course, cartoons. The more you exaggerate, the more fun you have with it. Mm. The importance of anatomy is um, understanding what's the underlying uh, uh, things that make it intrinsically that particular type of character, that animal. So this is a raccoon, obviously. If you compare it to a more realistic cartoon of a raccoon to a more stylized version of a raccoon, there are all raccoon at attributes which are very important to understand and to draw and once you get that idea of raccoonness you're able to explore the idea of personality similarly with uh, drawing cute characters you explore from a real bird to a cute bird a real puppy dog to a, a cartoon puppy big heads dog. and big eyes yeah so it's all an exp exploration and uh you know and That's to obviously have fun really enjoy looking at that image that's beautiful isn't it yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's an assignment to draw a horse and a dog, obviously for horses your horses uh, for courses. <laughs> your uh, cartoon characters. This is um, uh, a profile of a, of a, an illustrator, Peter Deceive. Peter Deceive. This is a beautiful uh, example of uh, his uh, his attention de to uh, detail. There's personality in every line of Peter Deceive's work. He's he's worked on um, on uh, on Tarzan, Prince of Egypt, uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and um, uh, currently for um, 
uh, Blue Sky Studios, which uh, of course he does um, the characters of um, Ice Age. I suspect that um, he also paints too, just the way he draws. He does. He's a very accomplished illustrator. Yeah. yeah. Chapter six. So this is exploring the ideas of age from uh, from babies to older people. Mm. Okay. So babies obviously are constructed differently to adults. You've you've got to think about that pudginess. Um, two and a half heads high. Typically standing, they're 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 about two two and a half heads high, uh, uh, tall. You measure characters in heads. I don't know why, but that's it. That's how you do it because it's always there the measurement the depth of the head so. well horses are measured yeah. by hands and people are measured by heads makes sense yeah so here's an idea of uh children the stature of heads. children stature of teens which are five heads tall and adults are supposed to be seven and a half but six heads yeah that's good enough for well, cartoon in cartoons they, 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 yeah. yeah and older people which are just always a Gravity gets them and pulls them down. Yeah, so there's some thoughts there and on drawing older, have, older heads, straight, older people. They don't have straight legs like everybody else. Yep, it? yep. And here's your assignment six to draw an older person for your cast of characters. Mm. Okay, here we go. Monsters now, creatures and other po uh, possibilities. Creatures, ideas for monsters come from different things, from you know, bunny rabbits to food. Crazy carrot. Found objects. <laughs> um, understanding anatomy and comparative the, the anatomy golden, is always The golden good. mean. Yeah. The pillar. The pillar of society. So, shake and bake. Yeah. So this is the idea of shake and bake is uh, com uh, uh, combining um, attributes from different things and creating a chimera, which is something new made up of uh, um, uh, other um, animals. So, and then bake it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, that's how you get some interesting uh, variations. Mm. Well, I mean, the, the way this is joined, yeah, it's important. That's a lot reminds me of a yeah. story. Yeah. So um, yeah, you get you know how you know, Sid did the same thing. Interesting ideas. Yeah. Sid next door did the same thing. That's interesting. Shaking and baking. Yeah. Um, creating hands. Hands are beautiful. Um, uh, informed. Yeah. Parts um, of character. Parts of the character. Yeah. Yeah. So different ideas on on drawing hands. Man, what's stinks in here? Yeah, I suppose. Um, e e even the actual, even the, the non hair part has changed. Yeah. Exploring uh, mi and miscellaneous, and of course, stuff. the more you draw, the more ideas come to you. Yeah. So there's another uh, profile, uh, J. Scott Campbell, another uh, accomplished comic book artist and animator, probably. I don't know what Scott does growing up. Uh, Back to the Future 3. Danger Girl, of course. So, um... He looks lazy, doesn't he? Yeah. So chapter 8, groupings, which is creating the cast. The cast of characters is made up of variety um, because you're adding the spice of life <laughs> variety. The characters, each character has to be a separate personality so you're unable to confuse them, mm. you know, unless they're evil twins or stupid twins. Well... They do like, have they do have twins in animation. What's what's the twin the, the twins who aren't twins in Tintin? Johnson and Johnson. Oh yeah. yeah. But they're not spelt the same way. Yeah. Well remember the Siamese cats in um they'd obviously got different names. Siamese cats in In um Lady in a Tramp. Never saw it. Oh. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright. Just so, just delete that. He's just <laughs> Oh. See, here's, here's an example, version A, version B, version yeah. C. Yeah. So version A, the characters are too similar in size and shape, right? Yeah. Version B is a little bit different, it's a little bit different, better. So, version C, the size and shape of the uh, characters are exaggerated even more. So it's more distinct, that's yeah. the idea, to get more variation in your characters. Yeah. Well, that's just cinematic. And that, in, that's cinematic. that helps your storyboards as yeah, well. Yeah, but that, that, that's, you know. So, yeah. That's what you'd go with. So, chapter nine, putting it all together, pose, color, and style. So, it's it. beautiful. Yeah. So, pose, pose is emote. So, gestures are uh, 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 action, the figures um, in action. So, usually, unless you're drawing uh, completely, you know, figures to be uh, uh, built in uh, 3D and then posed. Mm. Uh, which is typically like a T pose or a neutral pose. All figures have 
um, are, are best explained in in some kind of action pose. Mm. Mm. Whether they're, they're just standing there, but typically they're three quarter pose and they're in some sort of attitude. So here's an here's an example. Here's an exploration of eyes. So the use of eyebrows, uh, the bottom. Li- Bottom lids and uh, pupils to explore personality. This is interesting too, how the eyebrow is the line into the nose and then the eyes in between, and, and they actually are different slightly. You know, yeah. they don't have to be the same symmetrical. Yeah. Ooh. Hey. You feel so like flow in you? drawing, but you know, sharps. Uh, sorry, straights and curved lines. Uh, uh, are very important for rhythm and variety. So this is how you get this beautiful rhythm. This is Mushu from uh, Moulin. The, um, the idea of drawing uh, something with a beautiful rhythm to it is, uh, is very exciting. These books don't go into voicing, do they? They can't really. They don't, but uh, characters imply story and they also imply voices. So of, oftentimes the animator or the artist will be uh, creating a voice to the character in his head. You know? mm. Well, I'll be there, ma'am. Uh, you know, um, uh, which way? Which way to the corral? I, I've kind of lost my way. So you you get all these uh, voices for these characters that are um, implied in the drawing of the character. They have personalities, they have backstories. It's all implied in the in the drawings. That's why cartoons are so powerful. So oftentimes, uh, uh, character designers are asked to do small or large increments or changes. Well, because to the also, like if you, sometimes yeah, color coloring actually helps see more of the character. You know, like yeah, the character stands out from the background. Yeah. The character stands out from, from the other people. Yeah. The other characters, or there's a color palette in the scene or the yeah. show that you have to adhere to. Yeah. So all of these things have to be explored. Different variations, you know. Some char- some colors are analogous. Some colors are complementary, mm. and the different shades, different uh, tones. So rounding out the cast. Ah, changing the colors on the horse, on the, on the dog. Yep. A dog in a western. You heard it here first, folks. Yep. So color harmony, not just coloring the characters, but combining, see how the characters work in color uh, together. Mm. Very important as a cast, right? Um, Different styles, drawing characters for comic books is different to feature animation, which is a bigger animation budget, or TV or web animation, which is a smaller animation budget. So you design characters to suit the budget, to suit the style of the show. Betty Flintstone here. Yeah. Betty Flintstone. Oh, oh, sorry. He, he Betty divorced Rubble. Wilmer and then married Betty. Uh, Betty. <laughs> CG animation, again, different, um, you know, it's mm. more fleshed out video games, obviously. Um, comic strips or manga, they have a particular language, a visual style, visual language. And uh, that's it, the, the afterword. So, Tom Bancroft's book, very, very cool book here indeed. Creating characters, good for your library, good for your reading. Um, and to um, to get your animation chops, character, create characters, create characters with personality. Okay, this is Jim Bridges uh, from the Australian Cartoon Museum and, Library. And Franz Cantor, and I'm not from the Australian Cartoon Museum No, library. but we'd be lost without you, mate. Um, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, bye-bye.